All right, guys, so there's actually only five and a half-ish hours left on the Death Scourge, maybe less by the time I get this out. Uh, sorry, I got super swamped with um, uh, holiday stuff with the family, obviously. Uh, but I'll get part two out here for you now in case, for whatever reason, you are hanging out waiting. So we got through Node 5 using full War Dogs, and I actually ended up okay healthy-ish, but there was something missing, which we'll get to in a little bit. So let me go ahead and play, and we'll go through the nodes one by one. So, uh, and this one, I want to give a big shout out to Walker Slayer, and, and Purple Sticky, I guess, was also screaming this from the rooftops. Um, I ended up summoning Multiple Man over X23, and on difficulty 9, that was crucial in peeling off enough buffs to get to the T'Challa in time. Uh, and just in general, soaking up abilities, all that kind of stuff. So, very funny that Multiple Man comes through in such a big way. Uh, but he was instrumental, and I know a lot of people, like a lot of people that were pushing difficulty 9 ended up using Multiple Man. Other options for this node were unlimited with Emma. People were doing that and getting through it okay, but not super healthy. You needed to really set it up really, really well. You needed to take out that T'Challa and then take out that Spider-Man and then stall out the, the, the wave from there. Because after those two people are gone, they don't do much damage, but there's always the risk that Medic can bring one of them back. So if you get that done, you can stall for Emma to have her ultimate, go into the second wave and delete it, like we showed earlier. Um, Another option was the three Death Seed non-legendary members with Emma and Sinister, and you would clone the Kingpin. Uh, and apparently this worked. I couldn't get it to work myself, but I trust the people who told me that it would work. Uh, okay, now let's move on over to the next node, which was node seven. And this one, I think most people kind of beat it uh, by like a committee. And again, you could use the, the, the general strategy here was to take out Nakia and take out Captain Sam before leaving. So your first hit would be your Storm hit. I personally liked bringing in Wolverine, Saber to the next 23 with Emma and Storm. And I would sometimes be able to get all the way through to the Shuri wave and even take Shuri out. And from there, I can go in with my remaining Death Seed characters or Unlimited characters or X-Factor characters and I can get through it from there. So as you see, I didn't have much trouble getting through it on difficulty nine. I think this was like a 300 and something Scourge run. It was the same as the, the video we showed before this. Um, and I got through it quite healthy, uh, but I know there's lots of options. Basically, you just whittled this node down. And then we move on to the legendary section. The legendary section was very, very, very difficult for a lot of people, uh, especially if you didn't have crazy red stars on your red Hulk and your rogue. Most people have seven red stars on Morgan, which is great. She's probably the most impactful character, uh, most damaging, I should say. But the other ones needed to survive. So what I ended up doing is from left to right, I went... Red Skull, no, Red Hulk, uh, Omega Red, Morgan in the middle, Nick Fury in the back right, and then Rogue. And the reason I would do that is because the zombie Iron Man bleeds would end up on, well, not his bleeds, but bleeds from that wave would end up on Nick Fury. Nick Fury would end up doing assists, and if he create, he'd give energy. And also, the people he hit didn't take much damage for this Nick Fury, doesn't do much damage. Uh, and I was able to get through that wave. And the most important things to remember on that wave, you need to end it with Red Hulk ultimate up. You need to end it with at least one Omega Red ability up. You need to end it with Rogue special up and at least one Morgan ability or one turn away from a Morgan ability, which became very difficult on certain levels. And that leads us into the next legendary node, which again was very, very tough. And uh, on my most of my runs, I ended up having to get a little sneaky with it. So if you look closely, you can see I changed the positioning and I changed Rogue's ISO. So I made Rogue a fortifier. She was basically dead. But what I needed her to do was special turn one, give herself crazy amounts of buffs, and then ult because I did have the butterfly effect on, which just peppered my Morgan and my Red Hulk with a bunch of buffs. So I had special up turn one, I had ultimate up turn two, I let him rip one after the other, and then I just soared through the wave. Again, I brought Phoenix, because Phoenix would suck off the blind off Red Hulk, because you do ult right away with Red Hulk. And if you ended up using your uh, special or your ultimate with uh, Morgan, it could take it off there. But I found sometimes it just wouldn't peel anything off Morgan. Uh, or I could be I could be mistaken what I was seeing. But I remember Morgan very often had her buffs despite uh, Phoenix being there. And then Omega Red, hold that ultimate for the last wave so you give everybody slow. That slow from Omega Red made that last wave not as big a headache. And that last wave is the one with Spider Weaver. If you didn't have the ultimate up because you needed to use it on the second wave with the uh, 2099 and the uh, the War Dog characters, the Nakia and the Black Panther 1 million, then make sure you have the Omega Red special 
so you can get trauma and ability block on the spider weaver and then you can get through it that way so that was a very difficult node but if you went into it with your cooldowns ready you could be okay and that leads us into uh the last node which i think actually did become the most difficult node on difficulty nine because of uh scourges and stuff that we had on so as you see i'm not going to show my first hit here it's with bionic avengers i wish i saved it but i was doing this like christmas day during bathroom breaks <laughs> uh so i didn't get to record it but we went in there with our bionic avengers and we did a lot of damage we did a lot of good damage and i thought for sure i'd be okay and here's here's the trap i didn't fi finish this run i had to cancel it and start over and i actually didn't do another run so my war dogs did not end node five as healthy as i would have liked uh, but we're going to go in there, and I'll show you the state that left it in, which is the trap. And you're going to notice right away, uh, <laughs> not a single person is low. So I did really, really good on the first attack, right? I got rid of the Gambit, I got rid of the Chavez, and I got rid of the Echo. So I took their health passives away, I took the anti-assist away, but I didn't leave a single enemy low. And then if we go ahead and we let this play out, you're going to see just how miserable it gets. You know, I, I do have the Nakia basic. I kept resetting it till I got a proper ping to go and take the uh, taunt off Red Guardian and the taunt off Miss Marvel. And then I go in, try and do some damage. But you see right there, Ghost Spider was critting people. And if she didn't crit, she could still kill 1 million. She could still kill uh, Black Panther when he did his attack. And the big problem I had here, uh, and I learned this afterwards, is I did not have Black Panther 1 million ultimate ready. If you have Black Panther's ultimate ready, and you didn't use it uh, a second time on node five, I believe, then what you could do is you could steal the defense up, the, I believe it's uh, immunity, and maybe even offense up, you could steal all that from Red Guardian. And then Black Panther 1 million, he spreads it to everybody. So now you have defense up, you have immunity, so you can use all your abilities. Like as you can see here, I could use my Aquaya ultimate, but she doesn't have immunity, so she would get blinded. And that's exactly what happens here, I believe. I should use the basic. That's fine. But here we go. We take that out. Uh, didn't have enough damage. I'll go in and try one more time, I think. Or maybe this footage ends. I don't know. This was very frustrating because I tried to make this run work a lot. And what I would say is in these final hours of the Death Scourge, don't try and force no 10 if you're in a bad spot. It's faster to build all the way back up using the proper methods and then do no 10 uh, with proper cooldown. So if you did leave it like this or if you left Echo alive, where you left Gambit alive and you're finding yourself having a really hard time, you probably want to do a reset. So here we go. I uh, actually did pretty good damage onto the Miss Marvel here. Uh, I do I, if I use the ultimate here to rewind Rogue, I understand why I would do that, but it wouldn't end well. Uh, we use it on Ghost Spider. Another thing I found on this note is obviously these characters have like hyperactive dodge rates, right? All right, there we go. We go for the ultimate. Uh, we get the kill, which is great, but now we're stuck behind the rogue, and I can't kill the Sunfire. And I think the Sunfire is actually about to ultimate me, ultimate me here, uh, and then it's just donezo. So yeah, as you can see, War Dog's not high enough. Nobody was low enough for Black Panther to really spin up and keep going. And actually, you know what? I didn't have blinds on here. So if you're doing no 10, i uh, sorry, yeah, if you're doing no 10 on difficulty 8, and you have uh, blinds and all that turned on, you need to do the Black Panther 1 million. I ended up doing the blind on my main run thereafter uh but i didn't finish that one either yet and i don't think i'll have time to being it's you know it's the end of the day or the end of the scourge run and i just want to kind of hang out with my family still watch some of our christmas movies before it becomes taboo um but uh, again i'm sorry this came out so late i do take christmas very seriously with my family if it does help you that's great if not i'm so sorry uh this is the final scourge so i was actually thinking we can give some of our final thoughts uh at this time and, and because it's so close in time to the end i'm not gonna have it pull up in text so sorry you're just gonna have to deal with my my voice i guess uh what i will do is i'll pull up the main game here uh so what do we think about the scourge mode in general and everything like that obviously i like the scourge it gave me a lot of theory crafting to do and as you can see we still have five and a half hours left it gave me lots of theory and crafting to do which is something i thoroughly enjoy uh, it gave everybody legendaries at an easier pace, which is something I like and something I think is taken for granted. Um, players who may have just started this year may not remember what our last legendary was like. And Twitch chat, please feel free to uh, hop in. And also, what up, Falcon? They never gave legendaries away to everybody before. Now, I guess you can argue you need to get at least 500,000 points to get it, but 
if you've been playing for like six months, I think you can get 500,000 points. Easy peasy. The last legendary before this Scourge stuff was Omega Red. Omega Red was very difficult to unlock because you needed Nick Fury, Winter Soldier, and then the three Secret Avengers people who at the time were new. Um, and they didn't run his event for, I think it was six or eight months after that. So there was like literally this huge gap in time where like one or one and a half percent of the game had Omega Red unlocked. And nobody else did. Not a single other person had him unlocked. And so Heroes for Hire was still just this absolute nightmare. Um, and, and that didn't feel good. And, and nobody complained because that's just the way it was. But I think now if we go back to that old method, people will start complaining again. And I actually wonder if the old method made more money for Scopely than this new one does. Because giving everybody uh, these legendary characters, even if that's at lower stars, uh, it doesn't encourage people to wail out on every single new team. That used to be the FOMO. Is you would wail out on every single new team, get every single new character to at least five yellow stars, so you can make sure you're going to be able to unlock the legendary. For that reason and that reason alone, I think the Scourge mode is actually a huge success. Now, the argument would be, I had to build minions up this time. Yeah, that was that was stupid. That should never happen. I had to build the Web Warriors. I had to build the Dark Hunters, A-Force, Young Avengers, War Dogs, Monic Avengers. What were the other two? Heroes, Guardians, and Ravagers. I will say, a lot of those teams didn't feel good to build. Web Warriors felt good to build at the time. It kind of, looking back, it sucks. We have a new bio team already. Young Avengers is a is just a good team everywhere. So that one doesn't feel bad to build. Bionic Avengers, Ray Team, that doesn't feel bad to build, but they kind of they kind of suck in the Scourge, right? I think we can all admit that. Uh, here is Guardians and Ravagers, and I guess Wave 1. That was the worst one to build for nodes 5 and 10. Uh, and that, that felt really bad, but you really only had to do one of those teams to get by. So I guess not a complete failure. It was for the War Horsemen, so not the Raid Horsemen, not the Arena Horsemen. Though it could be argued that Red Hulk might be the best horseman right now, uh, plug and play wise. So I understand that force building is never something we gravitate towards, never something we like. But I would challenge you to, for the vast majority of people, I would challenge you to honestly say, I wouldn't have built up any of these teams anyway. Like, if you can tell me you would never have built up Young Avengers after Crucible started and they showed their value and, and raids and you can use them on war offense if you want. Sorry, not raids, war. Uh, and if you use them on war offense if you want and they could beat up a lot of teams. So I would challenge you to really truthfully say that. Ravagers and Heroes Guardians, they suck. Yeah. War Dogs is such a fun team and they're great in Crucible. They're great in uh, war, obviously. And they're going to be amazing in tower mode if that mode ever comes back in a meaningful way. So although force building sucks, I don't think it was as bad as people think. Uh, so for me, I, I like Scourge. And not just because I made videos and it was fun time, but because everybody got involved. Like everybody got involved. And it, it just felt like a it felt like a real event. When when Tower Mode comes around, it doesn't feel like an event. When Pocket Dimension comes around, it didn't feel like an event. When Tower Mode or Scourge Mode comes, it's like everybody's into it. It it recaptured what the first tower mode was, which was everybody theory crafting, getting together, chats, people jumping into the chats that haven't spoken there for years. Uh, and that was really exciting. I really liked that. Uh, so th that's my opinion. Obviously, I like Scourge. Those are the reasons I like Scourge. It's the reasons why I'm not discounting how people, some people dislike it, but that's my, my counterpoint. I'd be very uh, interested to see the counter to my counterpoint from you guys in the comment section below. But right now, I want to jump into... Uh, some of the Twitch chat that I, I missed on my little rant there. Uh, so Falkhead says, This Scourge, I actually took my time, went through difficulty 1, 2, then bumped it to 4 and got 70 shards. I'll get this I'll get this on the first go around. So cool, he's going to get the unlock. Jutsi says, Scourge is good for new players, and most new players can get the legendary without ever building the crap tunes. That's true, because you can do difficulties like 4, with the exception of this one where you had to build minions, with it being like no, no restrictions, right? So if you just had your Eternals maxed out, you can throw a bunch of Scourges on and just rip through the nodes. And I actually believe that's what some people do. Or if they have their Darkhold built out. Whatever you have built out. Uh, Steven comes in and says, The old method made more money longer because people always needed the required characters. People will always need to build Kree minions with Scourges as more people get 7-star horsemen and leave the rewards pool. Future players won't need the required characters. Especially not big ones, if any at all, through the Scourges. That's absolutely right. Uh, the more the Scourges come around, 
the smaller the pool come becomes of uh, for the ranked awards. And so the faster players are actually going to get their, uh, their stars up. And this became blatantly true in the Morgan Le Fay scourge. I think it ran four times. It's run more. It ran four times in the same amount of time it took the Omega Red event to come around once. So four more opportunities. So if they continue that kind of cadence for these legendary characters, I think that's fantastic. Fogus says, I wanted to build up Young Avengers just because I've seen how amazing they were. Steven says, uh, Juicy said, much better than me. No, I, I think you both said it really well. What up, Kev? Uh, Ragnarok says, I appreciate the guide. I doubled my score from the last courage and we'll hit top 5,000. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, and Foghead, he continues and he says, as a newer player, Foghead is, I just use Eternals and bullying my way through it a lot. There you go. So it, it opens the door for more people than Lockett. And for that reason, I like it. But anyway, guys, we're going to wrap the video up here because it is already 60 minutes. And I've already eaten up enough of the time if you are going to use these little final tips that we have. Uh, but let me know in the comment section below what you think. If I missed any blaring criticism, let me know. And I can definitely forward that off to the developers. because I think they actually value my opinion on this for whatever reason, which is exciting. Um, I'm not putting this into editing program. It's literally just going from here to the YouTube. So if the volume is janky, I apologize. I do think I have it turned up. Uh, hopefully that is the case. So, uh, talk to you guys another time. Bye YouTube.